Shalom Uvracha from Yerushalayim Ir HaKodesh. With the help of Hashem, we are privileged to continue this evening our great study of Pirkei Avot, of the Ethics of the Fathers. And uh, tonight's study is Mishnah 17 of Chapter 1, Perak Aleph, Mishnah Yud Zayin. Interestingly enough, the Mishnah introduces the great teacher of our Mishnah with the title Shim'on Beno. Those who have been uh, learning with us remember uh, that last week, last, last class, we learned the teaching of Rabban Gamliel. That was Mishnah 16. And tonight's teaching is the teaching of his son. Shimon Beno, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel. Why does it say Shimon Beno? Well, maybe one of the teachings that we will be addressing presently is the fact that he prides himself in having a certain insight into understanding based on the fact that he was always in the surroundings of great people. Um, as he as he teaches, he says, I. I grew up amongst hachamim. So maybe the Mishnah wants to emphasize his particular role as a teacher. Not merely his own teachings, but this was the result of the fact that this is the message that he was able to uh, learn from being amongst hachamim. Shimon, Shimon ben Gamliel teaches. There's some question, why does it say Shimon? He was one of the greatest rabbis, but Say Rabban Shimon, uh, at least Rabbi Shimon, Rabban Shimon Ben Gamliel. Why, why Shimon without any title of rabbi? Could this be a teaching that he said before his official um, entrance into the great level of of, of the rabbinate? Could be before his ordination. Could be before his, his appointment to leadership. Is this a teaching that we're learning from from this great rabbi when he was a, a younger person? Shimon Ben Omer. Shimon, son of Gamliel, teaches. Shimon, son of Rabban Gamliel, teaches. Kol yamai gadalti bein hachamim. My entire life, all my days, I grew up amongst sages. He was from the family of the Nisim. He's one of the most prominent people in Am Yisrael. The most learned people in Am Yisrael. The heads of the community. The heads of the of the of, of the of the of the entire Jewish. Uh, happening, the, the, the leaders of, of every positive aspect of Am Yisrael. And as such, since he was in the family of Rabban uh, Gamliel, not only did he have the teachings of his father, but his father met with, with counsel. His father met with, with other great rabbis. And he was exposed to so many chachamim. Kol yamai! From, 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 uh, from his birth. He was born. He was born into a family of chachamim. That's how. That's how he was born. That's how he was bred. Kal yamai. It's very different from someone's teaching you something, which they learned at a certain point in life, or well, somebody's teaching you something which which was with them from the very beginning. Kal yamai. Gadalti bein hachachamim. And the advice that he gives us is, v'lo matzati laguf. I didn't find anything better for an individual. I didn't find anything better for the body, greater than the value of silence. Velo matzati laguf tov means he saw all kinds of things which were good, but the greatest good, the greatest one teaching that he wants to share is to learn to be quiet. Velo matzati laguf tov mishitika. The person has to learn a silence. Now, there's a great there's a great institution called Ta'anit Dibur. Many of us are familiar with the concept uh, of a Ta'anit Tzibur, with a Tzadi. In the uh, Sephardic communities, may they all be blessed, perhaps there is more, it's more prevalent. Ashkenazic communities, I believe, less prevalent. There's something called the Ta'anit Dibur. Uh, and some people go through life, Baruch Hashem, at least to 120. And maybe never even once have experienced a ta'anit dibur. Ta'anit dibur means they take upon themselves 
and those people who can maybe the entire day, not to speak <laughs> words other than prayer and and, and study. You know, not, not to talk. And the people who have experienced both tanitzi work is when we uh, when we fast, when we don't we don't take any uh, food or drinks into our mouth for the, <coughs> for the entire day. Uh, people who have done both claim that perhaps the Ta'anit Dibur is more difficult and more challenging than the Ta'anit Sibur, you know. Maybe it's easier not to eat and not to drink than it is not to, uh, not to talk. I don't know if you've ever met people like this. <laughs> you've met people who are just, they have a, you know, they have a control over their, over their speech. Um, if you've ever encountered someone in the middle of a Ta'anit, Dibur, you go over to them, you ask them some question, or you say something to them which, you know, under ordinary circumstances, they would respond in a certain way. <laughs> I'm not saying that this is a requirement, but uh, I believe there were, there were people who didn't speak words, you know, uh, during uh, long periods of time. Uh, I understand this is the extreme. Maybe I'll give the extreme example so that we can learn some of, some of us. Uh, maybe for five minutes we can do a Tanit Dibur. That's also a great accomplishment. Of course, of course if you do a Tanit Dibur from 3.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock a.m., most of us are not talking during that period. But maybe at a time where we're actively talking to exercise a certain level of students of Shimon bin Rab Gamliel, Shimon bin Rabbi Gamliel, to learn how to be quiet. This is a, this is a, great, this is a great lesson. The Gemara teaches, if uh, a word is worth one, let's say, well, we use the word dollar. If a word is worth one dollar, then silence is worth two. You know, just learn how to be, learn how to be quiet. There was a great rabbi here in uh, Yerushalayim, a very close disciple of Rav Kook. Uh, his name was Rabbi David Kohen, commonly known as the Nazir. The Nazir, he's a very, very few people. Very few people. Nazarite, you know, grew, grew his hair without cutting it and observed, didn't, didn't drink any wine. He was a Kohen anyway, so he didn't go to a cemetery. Rabbi David Kohen, his son, is the, uh, is the chief rabbi of Haifa, Rabbi Shari Yashuv Kohen, Hashem, bless him. And his daughter, Rebetzin Gorin, the Rebetzin of the uh, Rabbi Rashi, Rabbi Gorin uh, Zatzal. And uh, he, he was so strict about this that I read that for 40 days, from Rosh Chodesh Elul, until after Yom Kippur, what? I once heard his, his daughter teach. She said, uh, there were two children, Rav, Rav Shari Yashuv and uh, the Rabbanit, Gor. She said every year, it was such a challenge, 40 days, their Abba didn't talk to them. 40 days, he was just involved in either being quiet, you know, or praying or studying. And she said she remembers every single year, the first opportunity, everybody's looking forward to it. Yom Kippur is over. Ah, oh, great, you know, Abba's going to start talking. Wonderful, right? And she said every year he said the same thing. He said, uh, you know, everybody's, everybody's wishing everybody Shana Tobad. The Habdallah is over, the Yom Kippur is over. And he always said the same, the same words. Asticha ulai, mishu yichol levili vakasha, patish. Never tell the fellow to tasuka. Every year he started with like, you know, can someone please bring me a hammer? I want to I want to go build a sukkah. That was, that was the word she said. Uh, even though it was like about the sukkah, but it was such a relief to hear, to hear the father talking. Lomotsati laguf tov mishitika. The word laguf could be that he's, he's giving us advice here on how to stay healthy. Maybe, maybe like, oof, if you, if you want you want advice, just take it easy. You don't have to react to everything everyone says to you. Not every not every comment needs a, uh, a response. The rabbis teach in Masechet Sanhedrin. If you're interested, it's in Daf Zayin, page seven A of Sanhedrin. That tuve, tuve, the Shema v'Adish. Blessed is the person. Fortunate is the person. There's a special level of blessing to a person who hears. And the adish, like the Hebrew word, uh, the Zarmeh. Uh, the Hebrew word adish means 
indifferent, you know, but Adish means doesn't doesn't react. Doesn't doesn't react. It's quiet. You don't have to react to everything someone says to you. And and the, and the rabbis teach that such a person who learns the power of silence, chalfu bishte ma'a, a hundred different forms of evil will pass him by without negatively affecting him. He will, he will, he will escape myriads of, of uh, potential danger. Because so, so much of what we do is because we fuel the argument by, 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 by answering. Try it. I mean, you should never be in any arguments. You shouldn't even know what I'm talking about. But let's say, let's say, God forbid, someone is, is uh, screaming at you or someone is, is uh, saying something which is inappropriate to you. And of course, your immediate reaction is, I want to answer back. Try the uh, Ravan Shimon ben Gamliel approach. Laguf Tov, Mishtika. So, what do you say? I saw a parent screaming at a child. Bezrat Hashem, all the parents, the children, the children, the parents should just sing together and hug each other without any harsh words being exchanged. But I, I witnessed a, a parent screaming at a child. A child, maybe, maybe 15 years old, 16 years old. And this child obviously was an expert at Mishnah 17, chapter 1. <laughs> they didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. You know, and the parent was going, like, you, know, you, can't, you can't scream for too long. You can't, you can't, how long can you go? If someone says, no, but, oh, no, no, that helps, right? There are people who will perhaps get annoyed if you're just quiet, but there's a great value to shnika. I had an uncle of blessed memory. Uh, he left this world, unfortunately, without children. Uh, his name was Rav uh, Matityahu Feldman. Uh, I learned a great deal from him. And he always used to teach us, if you're not sure whether you should say something, don't say it. Because you could always say something, but you never could take it back. Let's say, let's say you think about it, you want to say it, so you'll say it an hour from now. You'll say it tomorrow. But if you say it and it was inappropriate, there's no way of retracting your words. The Lomatsati la guf. There are many ailments uh, where if a person is nervous, there are certain there are certain diseases, there are certain forms of uh, illness which are connected to aggravation, to agitation, to nervousness. And so much of that nervousness could be avoided. Not just for the spiritual, not just for the spiritual self itself. It's a wonderful spiritual idea. Laguf! Let's say a person is not yet on the level caring about what spiritually is correct or not. He's teaching his love. I had a lot of experience. So many great people. And he wants to emphasize how, how important is this value of understanding that to speak and to speak and to speak is not necessarily the proper way. The opening sentence could mean, well, maybe you think... In the goof, something like goof, but in Torah, in, in matters of in matters of religious uh, discussion, so I, I will I will uh, explain, and I will uh, uh, interpret, I will expound the, the the text, and I will discuss various commentaries and super comments. That's true, but even in Torah, even in Torah, lo hamidrash ikar. The most important is not that which you discuss. Uh, in terms of discussion, you will explain this, and you'll explain that, and you'll talk about this, you'll talk about that. Allah <laughs> Much more important than talking is doing. And tomorrow night is the uh, of Hashem, Chanukah. Let's say here's a person who's talking the whole time about Chanukah, learning about Chanukah, teaching about Chanukah, speaking about Chanukah, explaining about Chanukah. But just doesn't like the candles on the doesn't like the candles on the Hanukkah night. You know, I mean, I mean the, the, the words are precious. We we, we appreciate. It. We love Torah. Vadi Barta Ba Vadi Barta Ba means supposed to speak words of Torah. But Lo Hamidrash Ikar, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Similar to what we learned earlier in Perkei Avot. If you remember, Emor Maat, 
I say, Harbe, don't don't talk so much. Hamaaseh, oh, I have great plans of helping this one. So just do it, you know. No, no, don't don't talk. Limit limit the speech. Midrash could mean a reference to learning, a reference a re- reference to speaking generally, or specifically, midrash is used as a religious term for for learning. Lo ha midrash ikar. If a person uh, teaches the greatest teachings, but unfortunately doesn't, you know, t- talks the talk, but doesn't walk the walk, you know, that's it's very sad. It's very sad because the the main part is Allah ha'maaseh, the action. Now, if a person is trying to say it because they think that by saying it, by talking about it, this will somehow stimulate an internal response. We have something called hachitzoniyut. That sometimes externality does have an impact on the internality. Okay, he's saying it because through, through the through the through the statements he will or she will be more encouraged to follow it. But just midrash, lo midrash Shimon, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. That's not the that's not the main that's not the main uh, emphasis. V'chol hamarbed devarim. This word kol is, 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 a, is a very, very difficult word to translate. Kol hamar bedvarim. Whoever talks too much, may be chet. Whoever talks, whoever talks too much, everyone, anyone, everyone. Because you would think, okay, maybe if people are not so religiously connected, talk a lot. All right, maybe people who are, you know, borderline on the, you know, the, the, on the periphery. Okay, maybe those people could. But he's not talking from those, about those people. Remember, call your my gadalti ben chachamim. So the chachamim, even amongst the chachamim, <laughs> even amongst the, the the less you talk, right? The chal armarbed devarim. Excessive speech brings a person, God forbid, to sin in many, many different kinds of ways, and therefore a person should be careful. Sometimes a person. Uh, a person takes upon themselves vows. They, they say they're going to do something. You know, I'm going to I'm going to take care of this tomorrow. I, I commit myself to uh, to uh, paying for this uh, charitable cause. I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to. And then where is the person? Well, something happened in the interim, and they and they they don't show up. Uh, uh, this is a, a fascinating teaching to us. Because I, 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 I'd like to emphasize the word call. Call. Uh, in, in conjunction with his earlier teaching about the Chachamim, person has to person has to choose her words. A person has to choose his words and, and be selective. And uh, there are those who claim, I don't, know if, I don't know if the source, I don't know if there is such a source, that a person is given a certain amount of words. Whether there's such a source or not, I can't tell you. I know that you have to be careful with words. Uh, uh, select your words, choose your words carefully, because kal hamar bed devarim If a person, you know, the Torah is one of the shortest, one of the shortest books in the world, relatively speaking, in terms of teaching. There are millions of teachings in that book. Millions of teachings in Torah. It's a very concise book. Relatively speaking, it's a very, very small, very, very small text. Maybe the Torah itself teaches us about Kalam Arbed Devarim. The, the Torah is not verbose. Many, many of the most significant areas of Torah are taught only with a, a few words. Sometimes not even a word, sometimes an extra letter, sometimes a, a nuance of expression. And uh, one of the greatest commentaries that we ever had, maybe the greatest commentary, would probably be Rashi. I'm not the one to give grades, but Rashi is surely, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I think it's been recognized <coughs> perhaps, it's, it's, that's acceptable to say, right? I, but Rashi is probably the, and, and one of the, one of the uh, beauties of Rashi is that he was able to take some of the most complex ideas, some of the most intricate details of, of, of explanation. Sometimes you read an entire <coughs> section of Talmud, and then Rashi somehow summarizes it for you in his commentary you know, in, 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 in a few words. It's, it's amazing. I have a safe here on the uh, on the shelf. It's called uh, 
the Korot Rashi. The sources of Rashi. The sources of Rashi. And this person published on, I think, on the entire Tanakh. Almost every, almost every comment of Rashi can be found somewhere. Surely more than 90-something percent of what Rashi wrote can be found in earlier literature. So what's so great about Rashi? Well, first of all, that he knew which, which commentary to select, right? Because you have uh, 50 different ideas that you can choose from. Which one is the one that will... But the way he expressed it, the way he expressed it, kol hamarbe devarim mevichei, person should be uh, selective and careful with their words. And we do hope that we'll be able to live up to the great challenge of Baruch Hashem, being able to speak. Vayihi ha'adam l'nefesh chaya. When God creates a human being, nefesh chaya, a living, uh, a living spirit, a living soul, which according to uh, one of the earliest of commentaries and translators, Unkulus, like a ruach memalala, a speaking soul. That's an, a, a speaking soul. A human being is given this great gift of speech. The great gift of speech that's been given to us, we're supposed to be able to use, hopefully, in the, in the, in the best of ways. And all the teachings in Mishnah Yud Zayin here, from uh, Rabbi Shimon, Ben Gamliel, all seem to have to do with this notion of being ever so careful, ever so selective in how we how we speak, uh, if you count how many sins can be, can be attributed to improper speech, hurting people's feelings, God forbid, insulting people, God forbid, uh, cheating people, uh, uh, words of, of slander against people. Be careful. Be careful with what you say. Because may we live up to the great teachings of uh, Rabbi Shimon, and may each of us find that proper level of balance between speaking. You're supposed to speak. You're supposed to speak, but know know when to stop and know how to speak properly. Thank you so much for listening. Shalom. Gabriel points out something very uh, very important. Uh, if we would only learn how to listen more, then maybe we'd have to talk less, you know. And uh, who was it that said, that, thank God, we're blessed to have two ears and one mouth, you know, maybe. Maybe you're supposed to listen a little bit more. And in the age of, uh, of people constantly speaking <coughs> on cell phones, constantly speaking on, uh, uh, to each other, people who are speaking hours and hours and hours every day, the challenge is even greater. Rav Schneer said in Zatzal, Lubavitcher Rebbe taught us that sometimes the names of the great teachers are reflective of the teachings. So this great teacher, his name is Shimon. Shimon means to, to, to listen, you know. Maybe implied, according to your teachings. <laughs> maybe Shimon. Maybe we should emphasize a little bit more of the listening and a little less of the speaking. Thank you so much. Shalom.